You know how there's that one thing you'd be wanting to buy, but then you remember you're broke and you're like, man, I wish I had a job. And then you get the job and you're like, man, I wish I didn't have a job. My first job was at this grocery store, and it was cool, like, the people who worked there were nice and stuff, but it was the customers that just made me want to commit a homicide, like, some of them thought that just because they were spending money, they could act however they wanted. There was times where I just wanted to choke somebody with a plastic bag. Like, you think I won't throw this card at your daughter? Anyway, let's start the video before I get mad just thinking about it. Alright, so before I talk about the trash customers, I gotta tell you how I got the job. So originally, I tried to get an interview for Chick-fil-A, and I fumbled, bro. It was going smooth until they started asking questions. So, why did you want to work here? What? What kind of question is that? Why does anybody want to work anywhere? People need money to survive, bro. Like, that was such a dumb question. And it caught me off guard, and I was like, uh... I like your chicken sandwiches. Hey yo, what the fuck? And at that point, I already knew I messed it up. They, they never called me back. So then I got an interview for a grocery store, and it was in person, and it was like asking a bunch of random questions again. And then it said, "What is your favorite video game?" And this was the time where I started getting into like Sonic games and stuff. But I came off so cringy. I was like, she was like, "What's your favorite video game?" I was like, "Sonic the Hedgehog." And then she asked me the big question, "What are your strengths and weaknesses?" And I was like, okay, piece of cake. I'm just finna lie. So I told her a bunch of strengths and stuff, made myself look good. And then when I got to the weaknesses, I choked. Cause I'm like, wait, is this a trick question? Like if I tell her a weakness, is she gonna kick me out? So I didn't know what to say. And for like a whole minute, I didn't say anything. It went just like this. Oh, my weaknesses are, uh, my weaknesses, uh, weaknesses, uh, That's exactly how it went. And then eventually I thought of something random and I was like, I can't work long. What do you mean you can't work long? I mean, I need breaks. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. And that right there, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting this job. Cause she just think I'm lazy now. But I got the job anyway. So I was a bagger and I had to help people put their groceries in the cart. And I was so trash at it for the first few weeks. The other workers were just looking at me like, Bro, who is this guy? And after a while, I got used to it, but it was so boring doing the same thing over and over for hours just standing there. Eventually, I made a game I would play in my head and guess what they were about to cook. So, like, if they had hot dogs, I knew they were about to have a barbecue. If they had vegetables and a lettuce, I was like, okay, they're about to make a salad. If they had chicken with no seasoning in sight, I knew they were about to make some trash. And sometimes I would zone out while bagging, and then after the customer leave, I'll look down and realize they left something. This one time, I ruined somebody's Easter from doing that. Like, I finished bagging their stuff. They left and then I looked down and realized that meat is still there and I forgot to put it in the cart. And it was the day before Easter and everyone was shopping for it because we was closed the next day. So by the time they realized it was probably too late and now they got an Easter with no meat because of me. And the thought of that is just, it just makes me laugh. <laughs> they probably invited some guests over like, yeah, we about to have some fire steak. Don't cook nothing. Just come over. Then they come over and it's not there. <laughs> but it wasn't an uncommon thing for that to happen. Even a cashier would do it sometimes. And then they would give it to me and I had to go chase them down in the parking lot and look for them. It felt like I was a bounty hunter trying to find these people too. Because their parking lot was big. Sometimes I'll end up finding them and sometimes I wouldn't. It is what it is. All I know is I ain't signed up to be a track runner. What I look like running around the parking lot with an eggplant in my hand. Anyways, bagging was annoying sometimes too. Like some people will buy a mountain of stuff and expect me to fit it all in one cart without breaking anything. Like they will watch me struggle to play Tetris and be like, don't crush my eggs. Shut up! And then whenever that happened, I had to go get them another cart. And then I'll have to help them to their car. Speaking of helping out, we had this rule we had to help the customer to their car. And the way we had to initiate it was so awkward. They said that we weren't allowed to just straight up ask them if they needed help. We had to just do it automatically. And even the customers knew it was weird. Like I got done bagging for this Asian dude. And then I just took his cart and started walking towards the door. And he started walking with me. And he was like, what are you doing? I asked myself the same thing every time, man. I just work here. But the good thing about it was like sometimes they'll give you tips for helping them to their car and stuff. Even though we weren't allowed to take tips. At first I would tell them I couldn't take it. But they always insisted it. Like they'll actually get mad if I didn't take it. So I was like, hey. Hey, customer service, you know what I'm saying? Customer's always right, right? Another thing baggers have to do is bring the cars back in from outside. And I actually like doing this because I got to be alone away from the customers. And I just got to think about life while walking around. It was relaxing. Unless it was hot, cold, raining, or a crackhead was out there. Yeah, there was actually a dude off a of perk running around. So it was nighttime and it was like an hour before I had to clock out. And I had to do the cart, so I was walking out. And this man ran by me with Usain Bolt speed, just speaking nonsense. We got bro here running around think he auditioning for Walking Dead. Making noise and stuff like... 
Mm. Other than that, doing the carts was fine, but it just made me realize how people can't do simple things. Like, you know how there's like designated places for you to put the cart when you're done? Yeah, people never use them. The customers were too lazy to put them back, so they just let them hang wherever. This one time, this dude pulled up in his car and he was like, hey man, there's a cart that's about to roll into the intersection. And I was like, what? And I had to run to go get it because the street that led into the main road was like a big hill. So if the cart rolled down, it was going to catch some speed, let me tell you. And if the customers didn't want to put the carts back, they would see me and just launch them at me for me to put it back. You'd be surprised how many people do this. Just throw the cart at me, expecting me to catch it. And they would leave it to me to catch it before it hits one car, like I'm the Avengers or something. And doing the carts was sometimes dangerous because people don't know how to drive. Like it's hard enough pushing five carts. I don't need to be dodging Chevy Tejos. And them Teslas were a problem because they were super quiet and I wouldn't hear them coming. So if I wasn't careful, one of them would catch a stealth kill on me. And one time a car actually hit me. Well, it hit, it hit the carts while I was pushing them. So technically it hit me. So I was pushing some carts and I was walking behind some cars and then out of nowhere, one of them just slammed the reverse without looking to hit the carts. When they got out the car, they were so scared. They thought they hit me. Looking back, that was probably God trying to bless me. I should have fell down and took that check. My first few months there was stressful because I didn't know where anything was. I remember I was in the back of the store for some reason. I don't remember why, but I was trying to get back into the main store and I opened the wrong door and it was the fire door. So it started beeping all loud and I had to get up out of there. So I finally got into the main store, but in the distance, I could still hear it beeping and I was trying so hard to ignore it. And I didn't know anything about the aisles either. So like when a customer asked me where something was, I was like, bro, I don't know, bro. I just work here. And whenever they gave me a cart filled with stuff that had to go back on the shelves, I was screwed. Like, where does the chocolate syrup go? Is it the ice cream aisle or the condiment aisle? Make up your mind. But enough about me, right? Let's talk about some of these customers. A lot of them were actually really nice, and I got to know some of them, but some of them were just evil. Okay, so you know those videos you see about people throwing attention because they don't want to wear a mask? That's why you ain't got a job, Guru. Well, over here, it's the opposite. You always have people complaining that the other people weren't wearing a mask. This one dude was at customer service just making a big deal like, there's people here not wearing a mask and we're in a pandemic. I'm going to call corporate. And this other dude was complaining how the security guard wasn't wearing one. I just don't get it. Why can't people go out in public and just mind their business? It makes everyone's lives, including yours, easier. Like, people love to be in other people's business till it backfires. What if that cop was feeling shysty that day and just clapped you right there in the middle of the store? I would have said it was justified. I would have gave him a round of applause. I get it, like, it's a pandemic or whatever. I wear masks too. But, like, if someone isn't wearing one and the store isn't saying anything, why are you, why are you making it your problem? I feel like people leave their homes strictly to be disliked. Like, this lady came in there one day and just started yelling, like, open up some more lanes. These lines are too long. Like, if you don't stand your old self in line like everybody else, this other dude was just a loser. So I was bagging, right? I remember how I said that we had to ask people to help them out. So I thought we still had to ask them even if they only had one bag. So I asked him, expecting him to say no. But he said yes. So now I'm walking behind this man with one bag in my hand like I'm his assistant. And when I got to his car, I realized why he wanted me to help him out. He just wanted to show off his ugly BMW i8 to me. Like he looked at me with a little smirk and he was like, thank you, bro. Like, bro, I do not care about your electric car. Like he really thought I cared, man. I'm trying to work. Another time I was bagging and this lady just abused her customer power. So she had some detergent in her cart, right? And she got to the line and was like, hmm, I might need some more of these. Can you go and get me some more of these? All right, how much? Seven. Kill yourself. So I got them and came back. And then she pointed to another flavor of detergent and was like, get me seven of these too. A lot of them were just so lazy. I was outside and this lady was like, hey, can you help me walk to my car? And I was like, okay. And her car was right there. Like, if you don't discipline yourself and push a little more. Another thing about some of the customers is that every time I worked there, someone will ask me the same thing about my name. So my name is Gambian and it was written on my name tag, right? And I swear, almost every day, they'll try to pronounce it and just completely mess it up. Is that? Parmesan? Porcupine? No, 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 don't tell me. Marmaduke. Like, they weren't even trying to sound it out. They're just saying anything. And sometimes they would assume that I wasn't even American. When did you come to America? 2003. I was born here. And whenever I told them that, they gave me a look. That look where they was like, nah, he lying. And then some of them would proceed to tell me how they went on an African safari like I cared. Like, bro, I didn't ask. And then some customers were just disgusting. Like, no home training. Someone would sneeze without covering their mouth in the middle of coronavirus. Get him! This other time, this told me and this girl that we had to clean the restroom, and we didn't think anything of it until we walked in. And you already know where this is going. I don't even got to explain. But somebody left a mountain of it just right there on the toilet seat. Like, they didn't even aim. It looked unhealthy, bro. We, we were like, yeah, we're not cleaning this. How do you even clean that? Like, they gave us a bleach like that was going to help. Even the manager walked in to see how bad it was. And he was like, oh! Rather than some of the customers being annoying, working there was cool. But after a while, I stopped looking forward to it. Like, 
Even the thought of working just made me depressed, I don't know. And I only worked on the weekends too, like it wasn't even a bunch of hours. I would just be chilling on the weekdays. But this one time I was asleep and my mom woke me up saying, your job called, you're supposed to be at work an hour ago. What? That just made me super mad because I already had plans to chill and I don't know where I gotta be at work because they randomly scheduled me on a Thursday without me knowing. And my dad was using my car so I had to drive my mom's big minivan that turns like a bathtub. So I was in this minivan just screaming. <laughs> And then I quit because I had to go to college. If you made it to the end of this video, just promise me this, okay? Have some respect for people who work at a store or anywhere for that matter. Just because you're the customer don't mean nothing. You can still catch these hands. And shout out to A Maco for these beasts. Go check them out, bro. They fire. Alright, that's it. <laughs>